We're still talking about the long-term causes of the American Revolution. We are talking about the Enlightenment. So when I said that our people back then are starting to question their religion and they're questioning their their government, they're now going to start thinking how could they make that better? How could they make their world a better place? And so they're going to start to demand reform and change. So remember the people like Rousseau, Locke, Montesquieu, Hobbes, Paine, and Jefferson. You know, Rousseau talks about that social contract that we have with the government. They're supposed to, you know, maintain our safety and our livelihood, and in exchange we give up certain rights, but that's supposed to be an agreed-upon thing between the people and the government. You know, Locke talks about how we have natural rights, the right to life, liberty, and property, and he believes that that's the government's job is to protect those rights, those natural rights to life, liberty, and property. And Montesquieu is saying that, you know, you got to have a government that has some checks and balances to its power. And if you did the three branches, you did a legislative, an executive, and a judicial, you would be able to go ahead and, and get that separation of power and have them each checking and limiting one another and what they could do to the the people. And then Hobbes, you know, he's really talking about how the government's job is to protect us from each other and how people need laws, they need order. Payne is talking about, you know, common sense and how here it doesn't make any sense that you've got the 13 colonies that are far away from England and they're doing fine on their own. It doesn't make any sense to stay with England when they're not helping and they're being abusive to the people. And, of course, Jefferson is going to absorb all this stuff, and he's going to kind of be like the American part to the Enlightenment. But, I mean, all the Founding Fathers, they're students of this. They've studied it. They've debated it in their households. They've talked about it among themselves. So these are guys who, and there are women in the Enlightenment. There are. They just get pushed to the side. But... These are the people who really kind of start questioning the government and why the governments have stayed the way they have been for so long. You know, why do you have to have an absolute monarch in people's lives? Why can't you limit it? Why can't people have say in their government? Why can't people vote? Why aren't the people in charge of the government? And so it's out there. And now that it's out there, it's going to be in the back of people's heads. So when the revolution happens, this is a long-term cause. Another long-term cause is the French and Indian War. So Britain is fighting their longtime enemy and rival, France. And any time mother country, England, is in a war, so are the children. You know, it's a family fight. So when Britain is in war, so are the colonies. So the colonies are over here, and what is going on is France is friendly with American Indians. Um, they've treated American Indians considerably different than the British government. They traded with them. They purchased land from them. They certainly had a better friendship or a better relationship with the American Indian tribes versus the English settlers in England all together. So, France is here in Canada. They owned it at the moment. So when England goes to war with France, so do their colonies. So the French colonies and the English colonies. And the American Indians side with the French. So you've got the American Indians and the French colonists fighting the English settlers here. The war is eventually won by England, and when Britain or England wins, they take possession of Canada. And what they have, it's a, it's a hard war, you know, this is what we call the Seven Years' War for Europeans, but we call it the French and Indian War. Uh, but it's a hard war. It's cost a lot of money. 
Um, and so England is kind of tired. They have fought a ton of wars over the years, and they are financially broke. Even though they have the colonies, even though um, they do have a lot of property, they have wasted it all on these wars. So they would like to have some peace. So what they're going to do, they make an agreement with the American Indians that the colonists are going to stay. <sighs> they're going to stay. Sorry, guys. They're going to stay on this side of a fence. And this side is going to be for American Indians. Another country controls this part right now. So England, as a result of the war, they've got all of this and Canada. That's theirs. But they're telling the American Indians, we're going to put up kind of like a fence. We're going to be neighbors to you. Good neighbors. We're not going to mess with you. You're not going to mess with us. We're going to coexist. And they tell that to the colonies. They tell the colonies, look, um, we understand that you guys love land. We understand that you're farmers and you're big farmers. You want more land. But we need you to stay on this half of the Appalachian Mountains. And the American Indians are going to be over here. And this mountain is going to be the fence. You don't cross over the fence. They're not going to cross over the fence. And everything is going to be perfectly fine with us. The colonists are upset, and they're upset for many reasons, uh, but they've fought this war, and wars are always to the victor goes the spoils, right? So they had won all this land. That's how they look at it, you know. They were originally here, and now they won all this land west of this area, and they won it. They didn't want to give it to the American Indians particularly after the war. Uh, the American Indians were super awesome at fighting, and the war was harsh, and so the colonists are not on a friendly terms with the American Indians because of the stuff that went on in the war, so they're upset. They're not going to be able to get this land, and not only are they not getting the land, it's being given to them um, in their way of looking at it to an enemy. Okay? So instead of this being someone who they think is a friend, their neighbor is really, in the colonists' eyes, an enemy. Now Britain has their reasons why they do it. They need a peace. They do not want to fight the American Indian tribes anymore. It is deadly. The American Indians fight a lot different than the British and they are really awesome at defeating the British. You know, like it could have probably worked, um, but it they just they there's not enough of them to win the French and Indian War. Uh, the second reason why Britain makes it is it's a potential ally down the road. You know, if you start treating the American Indians decently, like the French did, if something bad happens later on, maybe the American Indians will side with you and help you out in a war. You know, so they're, they're thinking in the future. Also, Britain is dead broke. Like, they don't have any money. So let's try and do some sort of peace to kind of ensure that we don't have to spend more money on a war or more money on a fight in the future. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I'm sorry. All right, so the second part of the proclamation of 1763, the colonists, they hate it. They're resentful. Now, why? I told you the victor goes the spoils. They feel that they helped England win. You know, this whole new French thing is now England's. And they feel that they should be able to move out and spread out and get into that land. And now they're being told they can't. They're very, very land hungry. The plantations take lots of acreage, and by limiting their land, you are limiting their money. They're an agrarian or farming society. The whole way they make their money is by farming. Nine out of ten colonists are farmers. That's most of the, of the area, 90%. So when you say to them that they're never going to have any more land than what they currently have, 
you are limiting their financial goals. If I told you that all you are ever going to have financially is what's in your pocket right now, you would probably not like that. People don't want to necessarily stay where they are economically. People always want to have more. They want to have a raise. They would like to have more money. And England shut that down on the colonists. They're like, look, we just it's not going to happen. Um, and I told you, during the war, the colonists and the American Indians really clash badly. There's a lot of stuff that goes on, and they don't forget it. You know, and it's it's hard to forget something that happened last week. It's hard to forget something that happened a year ago. I mean, and this isn't like, oh, they said some words. This is really fighting and killing and burning their towns to the ground, uh, doing things like that, and the colonists just don't forget it. Now, they, they gave just as much as they got, okay? So they were just as brutal in a war as wars are. But when the colonists are now supposed to be friendly with someone they just fought, it just doesn't, it's not going to sit well with them and they don't like it. They're, this is the point when the relationship between the colonists and the American Indians, it just kind of finally breaks. Now, it's, it's never been good, but this is like the point of no return for them.